All right. Hi, guys. I hope you can all see me and hear me. Okay. So, welcome to um, the live session for Western Vocals. And excited to see a couple of people already here. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, Desmond. Uh, that's really nice that you guys are here waiting. And uh, we're just going to wait for a few minutes and then have a few more people sign up. And then we can get started. I have some interesting topics. Hello, Lionel. How are you? So I'm just going to be uh, strumming, humming, and waiting for a few more people to join in. Say hello if you're here. I can see a few more participants. Just say hello so I know your names and I can um, you know, greet you. Hello, Sharon. Hi. How are you? Sharon coming in live all the way from Singapore, guys. So... All right, so I'm still waiting for a few more people to come in, okay? Uh, and please, you can enjoy this in the meantime. And if you have any questions, get them lined up. I'm ready here to answer all your questions uh, for your singing journey, all right? So here we go, a few, an old number, okay? Just a little bit. If I could tell the world just one thing it would be we're all okay. And not to worry, cause worry is wasteful and useless at times like these. Won't be made, won't be made out of in despair. Hit myself around my faith, it's like the stop is most feet. My hands are small, I know, but they're not yours, they are my own, and they're not yours, they are my own, and I'm, I'm never broken. Okay, so we have a few people who've joined in, this is very exciting, guys, I'm glad you're here. And we have a whole bunch of questions lined up. I already have a whole sheet of questions. So please, uh, hello, Jayvant. Welcome to the session. Uh, so please get started, guys. Ask me what you've been waiting to ask. Uh, I can help you. I can guide you in your singing journey. All right? So uh, if you have any questions, please shoot. Putting aside this guitar. Hang on. All right, so I'm going to get started with some of the questions that I already have here, okay? So I think the first question that I have is something that everybody who's always been thinking about singing asks, which is, how can I start singing? Now, I just want to say that there is really no rocket science to start singing. If you enjoy it, it doesn't matter if you're very good or not. Uh, you should start singing. And a great way for you to start singing, as in start singing on pitch, start singing correctly, is by doing some of the tips that I'll talk about now. Now, one con common misconception that a lot of people have about singing is this, that you're either born with it or you're not. Now, I want to be very clear about this. I talk about this in my lessons, even in more detail. But I want to tell you that anyone can sing. And that's the real truth because it's all a matter of training, okay? At the end of the day, you have to train your vocal cords and the different parts of your vocal anatomy to work together to produce the sounds that you want to produce. If you practice enough, if you train them enough, you will be able to sustain those notes that you want, you will be able to sing the notes that you want, you will be able to do any kind of vibrato, you'll be able to do, like in Hindustani, you will do harkats and alankars. All of this can be done as long as you practice in an organized fashion. Okay? And that's what my lessons on Music Pandit and all our other courses are all about. So you can, if you want to start an organized, structured journey, that's where you need to go. Okay, now let's come in. How can I take care of my voice during winter? I often have a sore throat. Okay, so this is a very good question because we have winter 
the winter is coming guys <laughs> okay i hope you got that one uh, all right so winter see the first thing about a sore throat is sometimes you can't avoid an infection but what you can do is take care of your voice properly when you have that sore throat okay so first of all if you do regular practice and if you strengthen your vocal cords and your entire a uh, vocal anatomy this area that is your throat your vocal cords you know your soft palate all of this if you train them properly the chances of you getting sick are quite less that's the first thing second if you actually do have a sore throat you need to make sure that you don't sing when you have a sore throat the reason is that if you have an infection and if there is some part which is sore or which is hurt if you try to sing with that there's a good chance that you can actually damage your voice okay so first of all you need to be careful about that now there is one remedy that often times like on a regular basis if if i feel like my throat is really you know been sore that day from too much talking or singing is something that i do uh the last thing i do before i go to sleep at night i just have a little bit of honey mixed with a few pinches of turmeric powder in it okay so don't drink water after that just have this so that the honey and the turmeric sticks to your throat and it actually heals your throat overnight and in the morning you will feel perfectly fine this is something that i highly recommend to all my vocal students so try it out and see how it works for you okay and i think the obvious question is uh, you know like please during winter try not to have too many cold things uh again if your voice is strong you really won't have much of a problem but if you do have a if you it's not that strong better to avoid cold water cold items or if you even if you have it especially ice cream because again that sticks to your throat try to have a glass of hot or warm water after it so that washes it down and it doesn't stick to your throat and cause phlegm okay i hope you got your answer desmond all right so any other questions guys I hope you are all doing your practice regularly. This will really help your voice strengthen and become balanced and you know strong. That's something that you would want to do. Okay, so in continuation, let's talk a little bit about you know how do I get singing? Uh, we were talking about that. Uh, how do I start singing? Now, one of the things uh, I mentioned already is I believe that singing is like an athletic. venture okay it's not like you're born with it yes some people may have you know a predisposition because they've been singing a lot when they're smaller and things like that but if you want to start today you can there is you i mean it's you can just start today and start building your voice and you will be able to sing okay the next thing is you need to have the motivation for it obviously and uh, that's one of the reasons we are here as well to help you and to motivate you uh you know to pursue this dream of yours especially i see a lot of adults who have these regrets that they never sang when they were younger and therefore they feel they can't sing now i'm here to tell you that's all wrong i mean don't let age or you know gender or you know the situation define what you can and what you cannot do you if you want to sing you should take it up and you should start singing i have a quick question from charlotte when you sing for a longer time you tend to lose your voice what can we do for that okay so charlotte the answer for this is simple typically when you sing your sing for a long time so let me talk about my own experience okay earlier when i was not doing this in a very professional manner when i was just starting my singing journey i used to sing for gigs or for performances and at the end of the performance i used to always lose my voice and it used to take another 3 days to recover so basically what was happening was i had not strengthened my voice enough i was not doing regular practice i was not taking care of it the way i should have when i started doing that i could see that i my voice would feel tired after a performance which is normal you're singing for 2 3 hours but i was be totally fine there's no sore throat next day i was perfectly fine back to myself i'm able to perform it's like training for a marathon right when you train for a marathon you don't just get up one day and run like you know 21 kilometers you can't do that so you train little by little by little by little 
and that little has to happen every day and you need to increase that time every day so it's up to you based on what you're trying to achieve so if you want to uh, plan for say you're planning to do an hour performance make sure that you start pushing your voice for that one hour of singing every day i hope that has answered your question okay chevant i am practicing hindustani vocal riyaz with music pandit what is the correlation yes okay this is a good question jevant now hindustani and western has an incredible correlation it's all the same but with different slightly different approach okay but the notes for example are the same it's just called something different so in hindustani for example we use the notes sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa okay and they are used for all the different scales in english or in the western uh, notation we have something called do re mi fa so la ti do and it's a very similar approach okay so all you need to do is you can do by the way both the courses together but the requirement is slightly different i'll tell you one of the key things which are different in hindustani and western in western vocals when we sing higher notes higher pitch notes okay we go into something called the head voice or the and into something called falsetto so we sing so for example i'm just going to play a note here so you can hear that my voice changed a bit so i would not go into that false kind of a, no i wouldn't go into that head voice falsetto tone in hindustani that is the major difference between the singing style of the two okay i hope that answered your question in fact in our hindustani course we do talk a little bit about the correlation even in terms of the notes the scales that you can get from your course in more detail i hope i answered your question jawant okay we have another question now from aftab khan aftab ma'am how to remove or improve nasal voice wow this is a very good question and a lot of people ask me this question okay now first of all you need to okay great thank you jawant so first of all aftab to identify whether you have nasal voice or not i actually have done a video about this and uh, we'll put this up in the cards over here you can always check it it's on our channel okay so the first thing is you need to identify how do you identify is simple you sing a note and you sing a ah, okay a ah, and then you hold your nostrils closed and sing that same note again a ah, the same a ah. So here I hope you heard it was clear that I had a nasal voice right there are actually a few exercises that you can use to fix this nasal voice okay why it happens is simple there's something called the soft palate which is in the back of your mouth how to figure out what is a soft palate if you run your tongue on the top of your mouth you will see it's from it's hard in the front and then the back it becomes soft that is the soft palate okay now the soft palate is basically what controls the nasal sound if it is not lifted up properly you're going to get a nasal sound so that's and i have actually given some exercises which will help you identify how your soft palate feels and to actually work with it so that you can remove that sound understand so there are few three exercises i think which i have shared which will help you remove that nasal sound voice so definitely check it out it's on the same channel just go to our playlist go to western vocals tips and tricks you can find it and you should definitely do this every day just do it for like 5 to 10 minutes every day and you will start feeling the difference and every day please after doing this exercise after being engaged with these exercises i want you to sing that ah what i just showed you now like you have to sing ah ah with your nostrils closed and see how the difference is you know make sure that there is no difference in those two sounds only then have you removed completely that nasal sound all right i hope i was able to answer your question aftab i'm sure you can fix this just watch that video and follow it regularly you will definitely be able to remove the sound okay 
All right. Next question we have. Okay, great, Aftab. Awesome. Desmond, uh, how can I learn to sing in more than one style? Okay. All right. So I think the core of wanting to sing in uh, more than one style is simply that you have to start listening to different types of music. Okay. Uh, in my lessons, actually, I have broken down some of the popular styles. For example, rock, pop, country, jazz. Okay. So you can definitely check that out. But you need to understand the different, different nuances that are involved in these different styles. And the thing is that your aim should not always want to be, I want to sing country. You should try and see what identifies with you. For example, uh, is rock more your style? Are you that kind of an expressive person? Okay. For me personally, my, uh, my choices are rock, pop, maybe jazz to some extent. Okay. I do sing a lot of different things, but I think this comes down to you. So you need to see what's on your playlist. See what, your, what, do you, what type of songs do you listen to? What type of songs are you enjoying? If rock is your style, then you need to start listening more carefully to what they do in rock. For example, they do that um, a sort of a crying voice, uh, kind of a sound in rock. They try to use that a lot. They use a little bit of high pitch screaming in rock, you know, and it's a very energetic, very pumpy. They try and give that grunge effect. So that those are things that you may want to look into and see how you can develop all those techniques and apply it to your songs. Okay. Uh, the same thing goes for all the different genres of music. For example, country has its own styles. You know, they roll their R's. Um, they have a very dark vowel sound. So there was a, uh, they won't say, how do you do? There was a, how do you do? like a very rounded, very dark kind of sounding vowel sound. Okay. And there are many more such things. So you can check out my course. That's the best place because I've talked a little bit in detail about each of these different styles and how you can choose a mix of things if you want. Uh, you don't have to even stick to one. And in fact, I always talk, tell my students that, you know, don't fixate yourself that you have to sing this one style you should develop your own unique style. That's what would stand out today. I hope I answered that question for you. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Um, any more questions, guys? Just a quick question for all of you. I hope all of you are doing breathing correctly. Have you all figured out how to do diaphragm breathing? Can I see a show of hands, thumbs ups? Are you guys uh, doing diaphragm breathing? Because if you aren't doing diaphragm breathing, that's the first thing you need to get right. As a vocalist, as a singer, there is no better support system. I've always said this and I'm saying it again, that your body is what drives your voice. So you have to imagine your voice, your body is like the engine, okay? And your breathing, when you breathe correctly, that is like the fuel to your body. So if you don't breathe correctly, you're not going to be able to run this engine right, okay? So this is really important for a singer please make sure that you have got the breathing technique right. I have actually talked about it in a video that was released yesterday. So check out our channel, okay? I've talked about how to breathe correctly for singers and how to gain good breath control. Okay, some exercises to do your breath control because when you're singing songs, sometimes you will lose your breath in the wrong places. How not to do that? You know, how to, how to extend your breath, how to catch, you know, quickly grasp a little bit of extra breath when you're singing, how to manage your breath during your song. Okay. That's very important for singers. So make sure you get that very, you know, that's, that should be perfect. All right. Next question I have here um, is how should I learn a song? What should be my approach? Okay. So again, this is a very detailed topic. Okay. Uh, at a high level, I can just run you through it at a high level, but I do discuss this in detail in, I think, my level two course, uh, but about starting to learn a song. 
See, the important thing when you're learning a song is the melody and the rhythm is one aspect. And the second is uh, the lyrics. Okay, so you have to split these up when you're learning. Don't try to learn everything together. This can be a bit overwhelming and there's a good chance you will go wrong when you do all of it together, especially if it's a tough song. Okay, so just keep that in mind just as a tip. So break down melody as one. You can just hum the melody of the song separately. Then go along with the rhythm of the song, whatever you're tapping your hands to. Okay, and then lyrics. And in fact, I'm going to be talking, I'm going to give out a video with details about how to remember and recall your lyrics. That's coming out next week. So make sure you're following our channel, okay? I have a question from Aftab, which I'm going to answer now. What is vocal resonance and how to practice this? Okay, uh, Aftab, are you talking specifically about the sound, like getting, getting a very balanced sound? Or are you talking about vocal vibrato? Can you be a bit more specific so that I can answer you spe about this? Okay, so I think uh, he's, maybe he's got disconnected. Okay, let's talk about uh, vocals, okay. I'm assuming that you are talking about vocal vibrato, okay? What vocal vibrato means? Sound. The sound, okay, the sound. How to create the balanced sound, which is coming from your voice, okay, fine. So, you know, typically there are three types of sounds that we produce. They're called onsets, okay, when they come out from your mouth. It's soft, hard, or balanced. Now, we should always, as singers, aim for a balanced sound. What I mean is this. When it's a soft sound, you're usually, it's very airy. You lose a lot of air. And the sound that you're actually producing is very low. So it sounds something like this. If it's a soft onset, okay? It sounds like... Ah, ah, I, come on, let's do this. So you can hear it's a very airy kind of sound. The problem with this type of an onset is you lose a lot of air when you're singing. So this is a big problem for singers because you're going to have to take in a lot of breaths and it might sound very funny. Uh, there is a second onset which is called a hard onset. Okay, And that's like, uh, like this. When it's, it's a very glottal sounding voice and you might hear a lot of very, uh, you know, especially male vocalists they might try to sing in this fashion in a very hard, deep kind of a way. Okay, so for example, I'll just show you. I'm gonna just sing this, just sing the sound E, okay? Just to give you an example. I'm gonna sing it first soft, then really hard, and then I'm gonna show you a middle ground, which is the balanced sound between the two. Okay, so here we go. He, he, he. That's a very sound. <laughs> very hard onset, okay? And finally the balanced. E, e, e. So can you hear the difference between the three? I'll sing it once again. E, e, e. E, e, e. E, e, e. So this is what you call a balanced onset. And this is how you need to create. So this, there's a couple of exercises, again, in my lessons, which will help you practice along with it so that you can get an understanding of what is your balanced sound. Okay. Now, again, this is very important. Typically, I would always recommend singers to try and find their balanced sound and sing like that. There are some instances in songs where you should use different types of sound. Like you should use an airy feel or you should use a little more harder sounding. That depends on the song. So, But be very careful when you use them because even overusing them doesn't sound very professional. Okay. So, for example, uh, just to give you an idea, like Nora Jones, the singer, or uh, even John Mayer for, some, for many of his songs, they, they sound very breathy quite a lot. They sound very, they have that soft onset. Come away with me. 
in the night. So you can hear my voice. It's a very airy sort of a feel. And it sounds nice because that's her tone and that's how she sings her songs. But that's not something that comes very naturally for everybody. So don't always try to emulate those things. Try to find your balanced tone because that's where your voice actually sounds its best. Okay? All right. I hope you was able to answer your uh, question, Aftab. Okay, so uh, any more questions, guys? Ah, okay. Desmond has a question. How do I deal with audition nerves, performance anxiety? Okay, so Desmond, I think, uh, let me tell you about how, how I deal with it and what I advise generally. So uh, that would be the best way for me to explain this to you. So again, I have addressed this, by the way, in my lessons because I know that musicians, especially singers, because they're front and center, tend to deal with performance anxiety even more than musicians. I feel like some of the musicians hide behind the instruments so they don't feel so nervous. Uh, so, but I, I mean, just like you, even I do sometimes feel nervous. But the, you know, the best way to deal with nervousness is honestly to be really prepared. Because at the end of the day, if you are confident with what you need to do, you will generally be more relaxed on a stage. Okay. There are a few tips that I can give you, of course. One is you can uh, do a few exercises to relieve the stress. Okay. We have, uh, I, again, it's all there in my lessons, but there are some exercises for your voice, for your tongue. Okay. There's something called tongue root tension, which is a big problem for singers. And when you get nervous, one of the first things that get impacted actually is your tongue, okay? Because it's connected to your um, larynx and that can definitely be a problem for many singers. So there's, you know, then there's simple exercises for your neck, your shoulders. See, these are the parts that tend to get really stiff and, uh, you know, that don't move when you are uh, getting nervous. So you should ease up all of this. Uh, do a few warm-up exercises, okay? The simple ones, just hum some notes, uh, you can do, uh, like for Hindustani vocals, that you have your basic swar sadhana, uh, you know, some of the basic, just a simple riyas for you to warm up. Then, or for Western vocalists, we have uh, a lot of, um, we have the simple lip roll exercises or humming exercises or uh, scales, okay? These are very uh, simple things, but that will keep you uh, all prepared and warmed up for the for your show, for your event. So one thing that it does is it's keeping you occupied and not thinking about, you know, standing up on stage and going all crazy. So you need to just relax and uh, do these exercises, get prepared for all of this. Uh, and one more thing is uh, when you are practicing for your shows, so, for example, you're planning to do a show in on a stage, okay? When you are practicing with your band or when you're practicing for the event, even if you're doing it a solo show or whatever, whatever you're planning to do on the stage, like how you're planning to move around, how, what, you know, actions you're planning to do, you should try to do all of that when you're practicing itself. The reason I tell you this is because only then will you be actually comfortable with those moves, and only then will you know, can you actually do them or not? Because you really don't want to fall flat on your face when you're at a show, right? So try to practice everything so that you're very familiar with what you need to do, how you need to move, uh, you know, what you're trying to achieve on the stage, okay? So preparation is key. That's what I can tell you. Preparation is key. So I hope I answered that question for you. All right, so let's move on to uh, another question that I have from some students, okay? So a lot of students talk about the diaphragm breathing, okay? Now, I just want to talk a little bit about this because I think, I mean, I cannot uh, emphasize how important this is. So first of all, what is the diaphragm, okay? The diaphragm is a fairly large muscle, okay, that sits in your body somewhere behind your stomach and under your lungs. Okay, so it sits somewhere here. I, I mean, one second, let me show you. It sits somewhere right here, but behind your stomach. 
Okay. So what happens is when we take a diaph when we are breathing using the diaphragm. So what happens? Imagine your diaphragm is like this. This is a big thing. Okay. Now the diaphragm. When we take a breath using the diaphragm, we take a deep breath. Your diaphragm compresses like this. Imagine like an accordion. Okay. It compresses like this, and your lungs literally expand downwards. So you are taking in far more oxygen or far more air than you normally do with just a regular breathing style. When we just do. Okay, we are taking a lot more air with that. So what happens is that when we have more air, we can do more with it. Simple, right? So if you can have more air, you can sing longer, you can hold notes longer, you can do vocal vibrato, you can do a lot of different kinds of modulation. So many things you can do if you have that much more air. So the whole idea is that if you learn to breathe that way, if you learn to understand how to do diaphragm breathing, this will. Help you become a better singer automatically. Okay, all successful singers only use this method. So please make sure that you learn this and make sure you follow it when you are singing. Okay. All right. Now, uh, next question I have here: How long should I practice every day for my voice to be in shape? Okay, this is a good question. So, I recommend for people who are starting to practice. A minimum of twenty minutes a day. Now, I think that's not too much to ask. So, most of the time, uh, for example, on music pandit, actually, we have practice routines that are a little bit shorter because they are specifically designed. So, you will have a combination of exercises which are designed for your uh, regular practice. So, you can follow that, or if you're doing it by yourself, you need to do the basic warm up exercises. and you some exercises to help you achieve what you're trying to do for example if you're doing exercises to improve your vocal range then you need to do those exercises a bit more okay or for example if you're trying to work on your breath control you need to do those exercises more right so you need to choose the exercises which are designed to help you work on whatever uh, trouble you're having whatever or whatever areas you're trying to improve okay so that should be the focus when you're working on these vocal exercises and try to do it minimum of 20 minutes a day as you become a better vocalist and as you can do more without hurting yourself without getting too tired you can push this try to do 40 minutes try to do 45 minutes try to do an hour okay if you can do that much really your voice is quite strong and it's almost ready for performance so you should definitely try to push yourself to do a bit more it really depends on what you're trying to achieve then any other questions guys the last 5 10 minutes any more questions for me all right so i'm just going to continue with my list of questions that i have from students here Okay. Uh how can I pronounce words better? How can I develop my diction? Okay. So, um so diction is something that uh as a vocalist this is something that we have to be very clear about, okay? Uh it's our duty because we are the people who are conveying the lyrics, the meaning of the song. So, we have to be clear when we are singing the lyrics. So, uh for example uh, i cannot talk about the hindustani here because hindustani has its own lyrics uh the hindi words which are being used and in different areas they are said differently so we have to be very aware uh on the colloquial usage of those words as well even for western for that matter when it's being sung in a in an american accent or a british accent they can sound different so depending on what the singers are where they are singing from it will sound different the same song could have a different uh, pronunciation okay so but there are some exercises some simple exercises which i have actually uh, given in my lessons again to help you pronounce your words correctly uh, okay so there's a simple one that i will say super slowly and see if you can do it along with me okay so the words are this a prop a cup of coffee 
from a proper copper coffee pot. Okay, it sounds a bit complicated. I'll say it again. A proper cup of coffee from a proper copper coffee pot. Okay, so let's see if you can say this along with me. Okay, I'm going to put on a, a small uh, metronome here. Oh, this is too fast. Let's see if we can do it together pretty slow. I hope you guys can hear this. Okay. A proper cup of coffee from a proper copper coffee pot. A proper cup of coffee from a proper copper coffee pot. Were you able to keep up with me? Or was that too difficult? I'd like to hear what you have to say. How was that, guys? Was that too challenging? So I have a whole bunch of different uh, uh, phrases like this that you can work on with your diction. So could keep up. Fantastic. OK. So we will, uh, maybe we can uh, do it one more time. I hope everybody has learned the phrase now. So we'll try and do it a bit faster, OK? So let's see. This is going to be a bit of a challenge. Could do it. OK, very good. Now I'm going to make it a bit. Okay, difficult. After, don't worry. Okay, if you are on the lessons, if you're on the lessons, we do it from really slow to quite fast. So you don't have to worry about that. As long as you do this regularly, you will be able to get the hang of it, okay? So I'm going to do it again at a little faster pace. Yes, don't worry again, Jevan, don't worry. This is something that I'm just uh, showing you here, but we do it in a very organized fashion, even in the lessons. And we start much slower. So not to worry. So I'm going to try it again, but this is a fast up speed. Let me see all the people who said they could do it. They're going to do it along with me, OK? A proper cup of coffee from a proper cup of coffee pot. Proper cup of coffee from a proper cup of coffee pot. A proper cup of coffee from a proper cup of coffee pot. OK, were you able to keep up? Who all were able to keep up with that? If you were able to keep up, good job. OK, that was good. Extremely good, Charlotte. That's good. Uh, so in the lessons, you're going to see that it's going to be even tougher. It goes pretty fast, OK? It goes pretty fast. This was only at 100 BPM. Uh, we actually go up to 140, 160 in some cases. So it can be pretty fast and much more challenging phrases. This is one of the easier ones also. Anyway, glad you had some fun there. Uh, so we are going to wind up very soon. So if you have any more questions for me, now's the time. Guys, come on. Let's hear what you have to say. OK. Any more questions? OK, so I'm going to tackle one last question uh, from my students, OK? This one is how to, OK. My vocal range is not so good. How can I improve my vocal range? OK. Now, this is a topic that I have, uh, you know, I speak about in my lessons. I actually have given many exercises for this. and. I think there is a student here also who has worked on her vocal range and has been able to develop her vocal range Okay, with the lessons. So uh, what I want to say is, see, first of all, vocal range is not the be all and end all. What I mean is, it is good, yes, to have a good vo larger vocal range, but it is not the only reason that you can or cannot sing. Okay and sing well. So you, what you need to do is this. You need to first understand your vocal range and then work on developing. So for example, this is your vocal range. Work on the lower notes, work on the higher notes, and see if you can start pushing it and making it a little bit bigger every day, OK, if that is your goal. Now, I want to just talk about one really popular singer who I follow who doesn't even, like, I have a larger vocal range than she does, OK? And her vocal range is just, I, I believe it's just two octaves and a couple of notes. 
and this is a singer called Adele. Now I'm sure everybody knows Adele. So the incredible thing about her is her vocal range may not be much at all, but look at what she delivers with the vocal range she has. So I say this to all my students: don't get fixated on the wrong things. Okay, vocal range is one part of what makes your singing great. And if you have a larger vocal range, yes, you can sing more songs. You can deliver, you know, more modulations. You can go to higher ranges, higher, lower pitches. Yes, you can. But that's not the only thing, right? As a singer, you should be able to deliver a lot of emotion, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of dynamics in your singing, a lot of modulations. You should sound. It should be so intimate to a singer. Those are the things that really matter. If you can bring that to life, that is far more important than just developing your vocal range. Okay, so keeping that in mind, and with all of this information that you have uh, from me today, I really hope you enjoyed the session. Uh, if there's any more questions, guys, please shoot right now, and I will answer it, or we will bring this session to a close. Waiting on uh, any more questions that you have. All right, I think that's about it. So thank you guys for all attending this session, uh, and I hope it was useful for you. And I hope you got some of your questions clarified. Uh, please keep coming back, and you know, asking whatever you need to. We are here to help you. We are here to, you know, be along with you on your musical journey. Okay, so don't uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are here to make your journey far easier and far better. and uh, we will definitely help you with whatever you need and if there's any particular topics that you want to know more in detail about uh, please let us know and uh, you know we are uh, putting out tips every week on this channel uh, so we will definitely address that as well okay uh, now one of the tips that is upcoming next week guys is pretty interesting it is something that came from one of my students uh, about how to remember lyrics okay this is a challenge that many uh, beginning singers have so don't worry uh, my step my i have a four step process for this and you'll be seeing it next week i'm sure you'll enjoy it so keep sending me your questions keep sending me uh, anything you want to know about and i'm here to answer for you okay so i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you again next week guys until then keep singing okay see you then bye bye